Hello, everyone. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And this is Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. Our guests today are Doug and Scott Meeker of Life Sherpa. Uh, but before we begin, Will, what's with your shirt today? For, for my next, my, my next shirt is my Best Buddy shirt. T today marks the, the start of the spring quarter for Best Buddies. Usually, we, we would, usually they have their events at USF, but because of the pandemic, they, they can only have them on Zoom. If, I, I've, been a best, I've been a member of Best Buddies since 2013. Excellent, excellent. And Best Buddies has been an organization that has been very closely associated with Ascend for years, and uh, we're very supportive of them, and they're very supportive of us. So thank you very much, Will. Would you like to begin with questions for our guests? Doug, can you give us an overview of Life Sherpa? Which services, which, what services do you provide? Uh, so a little background on Life Sherpa. Uh, we actually created this platform. It all started with my son, Scott, here uh, about eight years ago. And for many of you uh, that have been involved in, uh, in, in the various type of therapies, uh, for a long time, we had these things called Scotty Bucks. I don't know if, I, if you can see them in the uh, there. And Scotty Bucks were, it was basically a reward system. Remember that, Scott? It we used when you came home from school and you know if you got your stuff done um but they were you remember that yeah i do okay and but it was unwieldy so you'd have the scotty bucks here you know and the usual yeah. husband and wife issue of okay did you give him the scotty bucks sure. who gave him the scotty bucks and um it was kind of a mess so my first thought about how do we use mobile devices to actually um deal with these issues started with uh, started with a basically a piece of paper. Um, but what I saw early on is that uh, kids like Scott and his friends were easily able to, to pick up using mobile devices because of the touch and visual interface. And that really kind of blew through the cognitive issues. So um, we originally had this concept about how to use your phone, Scott, as, as the Sherpa. So instead of me you know, hanging out in the bathroom, reminding him oh. to brush your teeth. You remember, you hated that part, right? God. And we had the laminated signs and all the other things that just caused friction between parents and, and kids and so forth. We wanted to, to help Scott be self-sufficient. So when we first created Life Sherpa, and Life Sherpa is an assistive technology platform that includes mobile applications and desktop applications, but it's all about helping Scott with like your morning routine and reminds you to do that. And the other routines that he has throughout the day to help him overcome his executive functioning challenges. So it started with Scott. Will, I understand you have some other questions for Doug and for Scott as well. How did you come to establish Life Sherpa? Well, what happened is that, uh, you know, like, like, uh, like other parents, we talk to other people that have uh, um, kids that are on the spectrum. And I found some other like-minded people with technology backgrounds that I do. Uh, and we sat down and actually thought about and, and interviewed families and we interviewed kids and we interviewed um, uh, behavioralists um, and, and others in the space. And that's where we, we kind of decided that, hey, there was a, a gap there that we could potentially fill um, using the devices that were already in everybody's pocket. So we got together and we built a business plan and then we went out and uh, raised some money to build a prototype. And then we started testing it with families. And that was back in 2017 when we first kicked this off. I gather that you have a question now for Scott. As a matter of fact, I do. Scott, can you tell us about yourself and how you use Life Sherpa? I use my life Sherpa to, you know, get ready for my morning routine. And then I usually am doing a run and get ready for my nighttime routine. Can you tell us, can you tell them a little bit about, about yourself, who you are, how old you are and so forth? Uh, I'm Scott Meeker. I'm 18 years old and I'm a young autistic adult as well. And where do you go to school? I go to John Champ High School. And where year are you there? I'm a senior. 
I understand that LifeSherp uh, works in conjunction with a number of other organizations to uh, help the individuals involved. Could you tell us a little bit about some of those organizations and how LifeSherp uh, works with them? Sure. So when we first started, we were originally uh, going to be working with, with families, but what we quickly learned is that there was a wide variety of organizations out there that were very interested in using our platform to help them coach and support people that they work with. And I'm so glad you brought up Best Buddies because uh, we are working with Best Buddies um, in a number of programs, for example, with Best Buddies job coaching uh, programs that they have throughout the country. So think of it this way. Um, a, an individual is paired with a job coach, and in the old world, they saw those job coaches, basically, they had to get together physically, they had to visit. Now, we're connecting that job coach to the individual through uh, virtual devices, through their phones. Um, Life Sherpa includes our own, uh, shall we call it, FaceTime feature, so that the coaches and the individuals can work together to progress through uh, potentially looking for a job, being at a job site, uh, basically having that Sherpa nearby uh, when they need help to help them become more independent at school, in the workplace, at home, uh, wherever they're at. So Best Buddies is one organization. Uh, we're also working with Stanford University to create a program so that more neurodiverse students uh, can go to can go to Stanford. Uh, we work with the National Office of the ARC uh, to help their their chapters uh, use our platform. And in in probably a, a way far out there, um, we do a lot of work in Australia, uh, where the uh, in Australia they have created a program called Dandelion, which helps young adults uh, with neurodiverse backgrounds get into jobs like cybersecurity. So what we do is we provide a way for employers to stay connected and support these individuals, whether they're, uh, whether in, they're in the same office building or hundreds of miles away. And of course, with COVID, um, this has become even more important uh, in having the uh, basically the Sherpa in your pocket. Thank you very much, Doug. Um... For our viewers who may not know, actually, what is a Sherpa? Well, a Sherpa is the name given to mountain guides that help climbers get up the mountain. And we thought it was appropriate because that's what we want our platform to enable. I mean, everyone has got people that supports them. The challenge is these days is those people can't always be with them. So how do we bring the virtual Sherpa uh, to help you climb the mountain. And, and the most famous Sherpa of all time is his name is Tenzing Norgay. And he is the Sherpa that helped Sir Edmund Hillary climb Mount Everest back in the 50s. And that's where the name Sherpa really became popularized, which is to help you climb the mountain. Excellent. Well, th thank you for that. Also, you described um, uh, what uh, Live Sherpa does uh, for Scott and for the other people? Would you and he mm -hmm. be able to actually show or describe what uh, it does uh, for our viewers? Yes. So what Live Sherpa does is what we do is we create uh, electronic checklist, for example. So and those checklists can go off at at any time. So Scott, can you talk about? Your, your, I think you've got like an 18 step routine that he does in the morning. He gets up, reminds him to take his meds. Scott actually goes for a run in the morning, um, but it helps you get through all those steps. You wanna talk about it? Yeah, so I'm trying to get myself all exercise and so that I have some energy in the morning. But how do you use Life Sherp in the morning? I use it on my phone. It's on your phone and what does it do for you? goes through all my steps. Right. So in other words, we set up a, a custom routine for Scott. And with our platform, we built it in a way so if an organization is working with multiple individuals, each of those individuals can have their own customized program. 
And think of it this way as digital scaffolding that uses mm -hmm. reminders, checklist, uh, video chat, um, a whole uh, number of digital tools to help that individual um, either get over executive functioning challenges or remind them to do coursework that they may need for pre-employment services or connect them to their job coach. That's another thing that we're doing in Australia is we're connecting the job coaches and the candidates virtually to help them find a job. We'll now hear from uh, Stacy Kennedy, our cultural correspondent, who has a few questions for Doug and Scott. Yeah, one, I have, one question I have so far, what do you think about the use in this database, you know, more, with the details about employment? How do we use it in with, with employers? Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. Okay, so the way that we're, what typically happens, and I, I think somebody there said they were a job coach. Yes. So what, what typically happens in these situations is that the job coaching engagement usually ends after it could be 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. And what they found in research, again, we were fortunate enough to get hooked up with this group in Australia, is that um, that can be detrimental. It takes longer to get adjusted to a job. And, and generally, uh, people are going to need some level of support. And one of the big issues is just around mental health. They might get anxious. Mm -hmm. uh, they might get depressed. They have all kinds of other issues. So how do we keep them connected to their buddies, to their family, to, to others that can support them, even though they may not be there physically? And that's one of the ways that we use Life Sherpa. And I'll give you a practical example. Sure. Um, in Australia, we have a young man who's doing cybersecurity and uh, he's got a support specialist, but she's about 30 miles away at another site. So uh, he was feeling anxious because um, he got two meetings booked on top of, of one another or he had an extra software release, but he just got anxious. And in Life Sherpa, we have a way where you can set your status. For example, I'm doing good. A green is good. A, you know, a yellow is, oh, I could have a down day. Well, he actually set his status to red, which meant that he was, he was dealing with anxiety. And that immediately triggered a call uh, and support, again, via Life Sherpa to him directly at his employment site. So um, what we've been doing for that company is really helping them reduce Reduce what we would call workplace bumps. Uh, and those bumps continue even after the job coaching phase. So that's what employers are using Life Sherpa before. Thank you very much, Stacy. Mm -hmm. uh, Will, I understand you have another question or two for Doug and Scott. How has your time in Life Sherpa helped you to understand the spectrum? Well, I, I, I tell you, um, my background was originally uh, in uh, software and uh, digital media. So for most of my life, I was, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was a corporate guy. I worked at uh, uh, what was then called America Online back in the 90s through all the craze of the dot-com phase. But uh, once uh, Scott was diagnosed uh, on the spectrum, I lost a lot of interest in, in, uh, in what was my old career, and I picked up a new career. And the great thing about working on Sherpa is that it has introduced me to so many other people like Dr. Fung at Stanford and, and Michael and your team. And all of that by being able to combine uh, my passion, which is helping kids like Scott, uh, and to a certain extent my job <laughs> into one quest, um, it's taught me a great deal about the challenges that, that many of you are gonna be facing uh, you know, in the next five to 10 years as you go out and uh, need to become more independent. So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I've been able to do that. Excellent. Will, do you have any additional questions right now for Doug and Scott? I have one for Scott. Mm. Yeah, Will. Scott, have you made new friends through Life Sherpa? Have you made new friends? Do you have some other friends that use Life Sherpa, like Ryan? Um, Forrest use Life Sherpa. Forrest, yes. We have a friend of ours who had a traumatic brain injury. Scott, tell them a little bit about a place to be where there are other kids working using Life Sherpa, but tell them what a place to be does. Okay, so a place to be basically does a 
kids with the disabilities uh, have, we have a, a place to be events usually for like the summer or spring. What do they do there at a place to be? What kind of therapy is it? Music therapy. Right. So you're involved in all, all, along with Best Buddies and Boy Scouts, you're very involved in a place to be, right? And what do you do there? Um, I basically um, re do a, some rehearsing for a show. You're in a lot of the shows, right? Mm -hmm. So within that, within a place to be, um, we have a, a number of people that are also using Life Sherpa. Stacy, I believe you have one additional um, question. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, Doug and Scott, um, how, how has this affected you, especially with COVID? How has things like changed as it has for many people? But in this case, um, wh how, what was, what's the huge impact that COVID has really brought to you guys? Well, Scott, you, Scott, you just want to say how COVID is, has, has impacted you? To start with? Uh, COVID has impacted me because I've been missing all my friends at school a lot and going to school. Yeah, but hopefully we're going to get back to school soon, right? That's right. Yeah, that, that's that been the downside. I, I would say that the upside uh, for employment is, they, is that we've accelerated the trend around virtual jobs. And I think there's going to be more opportunities uh, for people um, like Scott and others to learn new skills and actually do jobs uh, virtually. And that over, which will help us overcome the transportation issue, right. which is a big barrier uh, most, in a lot of these Like lot of these most are using Zoom, like even for just hangouts, like too. And I'm sure, but probably will, you know, is well, extra here, here's, specialized. Here's why oh. our clients generally, um, a lot of companies use Zoom. Uh -huh. um, the only issue with that is is yeah. that that um, it's not necessarily private. We built our own video chat platform into uh -huh. Life Sherpa so that no one is sharing personal information in any way, shape, or form. Oh, so we have a we have a number of our companies that they they call it Sherpa time, where they can actually video call. Uh, their clients or a group of clients all through Life Sherpa and do that in a private, secure way, and that's that's another big feature that we've we've seen great great growth in since the uh, pandemic hit. So Sherpa keeps things confidential. That's great. That's a big part of what we and, and that was a learning experience when we first started. Mm -hmm. uh, Stacy, you know, we we set it up so that you could communicate with your phone number or text and. Or FaceTime. And what we found is that uh, I'm for the job coach that's on the phone here is that organizations and the individuals wanted to keep all that, all that personal information private. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do it all through Life Sherpa. And we can also uh, track, you know, if we want, we can also see who needs the most help and when so that we can be proactive in uh, where we support them. Wonderful, thank you. Any last words, uh, Doug and Scott? And then finally, yeah, if our viewers are interested in learning more and contacting Life Sherpa, what's the best way of doing that? Sure, sure. So Scott, why don't we start with you? What would you, you just want to? What do you want to say to everybody? Uh, I would say it was. It's very nice to see you all. Thank you for including in this. We we I, I am aware of Ascend and the wonderful wonderful things that you do in your community. So whatever we can do uh, to support you, please let us know. If you're interested in Life Sherpa, uh, you can go to our website, lifesherpaapp.com. Life Sherpa is uh, currently built for organizations, uh, whether you're a, a college program, whether you're a job coaching or vocational organization, whether you're an employer, um, but we've really built it for those organizations to be able to provide it to their clients. Uh, and if you know of an organization that might be interested, please have them reach out on our website and we'll set them up a demo. But thank you so much for having us. Thank you. And now we have a special guest, our, our longtime friend, Nona Meloslavsky, who is a Goodwill ambassador with Best Buddies. And she's going to tell us uh, her current activities and what Best Buddies is doing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, world. How are you all doing today? 
I just started this year, actually, um, December of this year. And it's been really fun. I taught out of school. I've been doing events and I'll be doing more events um, for um, Best Buddy soon. But I still have to wait till next week to ask again what event I'm going to be talking at. What sort of things do you tell at the schools, Nona? I just read from my speech. That's pretty much it. Can you can you tell our viewers what's in your speech and what you tell them through it? I talk about my favorite socials with best buddies, like the ice cream social, the prom, and how I got bullied in high school. We'll now hear from our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I am um, things. Some things I'd like to share is a. Uh, there is this mental health association um, in San Francisco on 870 Market Street that is happening on Thursday, February 25th, starting at 5.30. And apparently this is a weekly thing. So starting Feb 25 uh, on Thursdays, it'll be every Thursdays. So anyways, what it is, it's a supportive space for peers who identify as adults on the autism spectrum to share their successes, challenges, and, and uh, deepen their understanding of autism. And um, to find out more about you know, the virtual via Zoom information, um, you wanna talk to Lisa Sun, S-U-N at mentalhealthsf.org. So, um, and there's also a toll-free number uh, one eight three three five four eight zero two eight two. 548 uh, Saturday, March 20th, um, Stanford is uh, having an online via Zoom event themselves, which is a one-day conference for, um, for everybody, parents, educate, educators, and care providers of children and adults uh, with ASD. And they'll be focusing on new research and services for individuals and optimize their long-term functioning. And um, the, the person or the place you want to contact is Stanford Autism Center. And it's their 14th, 14th annual autism update and speakers too. Um, one last thing, uh, this is a, does not involve a date or anything. It's just an update of on this uh, website called Benevity, B E N E V I T Y dot com, um, provided by the Fun Autism Fun Bay Area, and they um, they uh, make activities suitable for families who have or no members who are you know related have related disability differences and who have autism. And apparently it's a really, it's a site where um, you could check it out at, again, ben, benevity.com, uh, where you could find series of free concerts too. So, and that is in San Francisco as well on Masonic 31338 Masonic Avenue. So that is my report, thank you. Thank you very much, Stacy. And now uh, for our final segment, we'll hear from Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I am Jennifer Brooks, the book correspondent for Life on the Autism Spectrum. And I am here to tell you about a, another book that provides a new insight <laughs> into the world of autism and the people who experience it. Today's book is, This is Your Brain on Music, The Science of a Human Obsession. As you may gather from the title, this book is not focused specifically on autism. It's about music and specifically the neuroscience of music. This author is very interested in both music and neuroscience. He is a musician and a neuroscientist. And he does a very good job explaining scientific details about how our brains process music. The first two chapters are about music theory. And then he goes on to discuss 
such subjects as our memories of the music and why why good music seems to stop being created after we turn 30. And all of that is is very good. He does a very good job with all of that. And that's the reason I am recommending this book. However, there are some statements he makes about people with autism that I personally take issue with. I am not a neuroscientist. I am not sure if the uh, entire neuroscience community agrees that these statements are true. However, he goes on to describe people with a condition called Williams syndrome. These people tend to be very socially gregarious and also very musically talented. Then he says, a contrast is people with ASD, many of whom also suffer from intellectual impairment and many of whom don't suffer from intellectual impairment, it should be noted. Although some people with ASD play music and some of them have reached a high level of technical proficiency, they do not report being emotionally moved by music. I take issue with this because I personally am on the autism spectrum and I have experienced being emotionally moved by music, especially in my fifth and sixth grade music classes at school. I was the only kid in the class who could be literally reduced to tears by certain songs. Nobody knew at the time that I was on the autism spectrum, but they certainly did notice me breaking down crying for no apparent reason. And yeah, nobody understood the reason why, but it may or may not have had something to do with the unidentified autism that I was experiencing. Uh, Mr. Levitin, the author of this book, goes on to say that population of people with autism spectrum is a population who are highly antisocial and not very musical. As another statement that I take issue with, he uh, doesn't define what he means by antisocial, but it is not true that most people with autism are antisocial. Most of them desperately want to make friends with people and be social. They just don't know how. That is different from being antisocial, Mr. Levitin. And second of all, you also don't explain what you mean by not very musical. If you are referring, if you mean, if your meaning is that people with autism tend to be devoid of musical talent, I also must take issue with that, Mr. Levitin, because our entire crew here on the Life on the Autism Spectrum show, we all know somebody on the autism spectrum who is very musically talented. Her name is Stacy Kennedy. She is an excellent singer and she has performed in at least one musical performance. So I, Although you've written an excellent book on music and neuroscience, Mr. Levitin, I must take issue with your statements about autism. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Well, folks, uh, that's this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burdick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I am Jennifer Brooks. And until next time, stay well, stay safe. Take care. Mm -hmm.